Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Monsters Manifested, right here on DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode, we're going to be continuing our journey through the demonic types of monsters in the Monster Manual, and we're going to cover the Nalfeshni. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Nalfeshni stat block can be found on page 62 of the Monster Manual, and its lore can be found on page 53. So, let's begin there, shall we? The Nalfeshni is one of the most grotesque demons, a corpulent mockery of ape and boar standing twice the height of a human with feathered wings that seem too small for its bloated body. These brutish figures conceal a remarkable intelligence and cunning. Nalfeshnis are devastating in combat, using their wings to soar above the front ranks and reach vulnerable adversaries that can be dispatched with little effort. From the thick of battle, they telepathically bellow commands to lesser demons, even as they inspire a sense of dread that forces their foes to scatter and run. Nalfeshnis feed on hatred and despair, but they crave humanoid flesh above all else. They keep their larders filled with humanoids abducted from the material plane, then eat those creatures alive during elaborate feasts. Thinking of themselves as refined and cultured, Nalfeshnis employ stained and rusted cutlery when they dine. And that's all there is when it comes to the Nalfeshni in terms of lore. Pretty intense, pretty graphic, I would say. They certainly provide the reader with a decent amount of information in terms of their disposition, their characteristics, traits, and stuff like that. Very interesting that they chose to specify the use of rusted cutlery when dining humanoids. But with all that being said, I think that there's some information there we can pull from to make some intriguing or disturbing adventures for our players. But either way, I'm sure we can make something that'll be memorable. But before we get into all of that, let's move on to the stat block, shall we? The Nalfeshni is a large fiend, demon, with a chaotic evil alignment. It has an armor class of 18, which is natural armor. It has hit points that average 184 or 16 d10 plus 96. And it has a movement speed of 20 feet, along with a flying speed of 30 feet. The Nalfeshni has a strength of 21, a dexterity of 10, a constitution of 22, an intelligence of 19, a wisdom of 12, and a charisma of 15. Its saving throws include constitution plus 11, intelligence plus 9, wisdom plus 6, and charisma plus 7. The Nalfejni has the resistance to damage types of cold, fire, lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. It is also immune to the poison damage type, and is immune to the poisoned condition. The Nalfeshni has the sense of true sight for 120 feet, a passive perception of 11. It can speak the languages of abyssal and telepathy for 120 feet, and it is a challenge rating of 13. On to the ability. Magic resistance. The Nalfeshni has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. And for the actions, multi-attack. The Nalfeshni uses horror nimbus if it can then makes three attacks, one with its bite and two with its claws. Bite. Melee weapon attack with a plus 10 to hit, a reach of 5 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 32 or 5d10 plus 5 piercing damage. Claw. Is a melee weapon attack with a plus 10 to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 15 or 3d6 plus 5 slashing damage. Horror Nimbus, which recharges on a 5 or a 6. Nalfeshni magically emits scintillating, multicolored light. Each creature within 15 feet of the Nalfeshni that can see the light must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. A creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. If a creature's saving throw is successful, or the effect ends for it, the creature is immune to the Nalfeshni's horror nimbus for the next 24 hours. And finally, teleport. The Nalfeshni magically teleports, along with any equipment it is wearing or carrying, up to 120 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. 
And that's all we got when it comes to the stats of the Nalfeshni. So another pretty solid monster. It's got some abilities and an interesting one in the Horror Nimbus and Teleport. Alongside its lore, which I found to be intriguing, to say the least. Surprising that they would provide so much description for a Nalfeshni when comparatively to the other lesser demons, they were only given perhaps a few sentences, a paragraph in their descriptions. But I think that we can make a compelling adventurer scenario implementing the Nalfeshni. So without further ado, let's move on to some adventure crafting. Okay, so immediately what I think of when reading the stats of the Nalfeshni along with the lore, the first thing that comes to mind for me is an adventure or scenario where the Nalfeshni sort of has this total rule and domination of a certain area. So say your players are traversing the land from one kingdom to another or from one city to the next, or even overseas, perhaps they're going from one continent to another, something like that. And they encounter this sort of isolated settlement, if you would. And this isolated settlement is a place of endless, seemingly inherent fear and despair by the citizens of this area. And the reason for them enduring this fear and terror and strife every single day is because that settlement is essentially under siege by a Nalfeshni or multiple Nalfeshni. And what's happening is, is the Nalfeshni every 24 hours or what have you is constantly inducing fear by use of the horror nimbus ability that it has. And so these people are effectively prisoners in their own homes. And once every so often, could be once a month, once a week, once every six months, whatever you want it to be, the Nalfeshni comes down and abducts certain individuals in order to bring them back to its lair to consume them whenever they're feeling hungry or a bit peckish. So consider looking at the settlement from the eyes of the Nalfeshni as something like its own personal pantry where the snacks are there whenever it wants. And all it has to do is invoke this fear upon the individuals that reside there. And it can swoop down and pick up whomever it wants and have a snack whenever it feels hungry. And I think that with that, you could implement something that's pretty interesting that has a little bit of an investigatory nature to it, if you would because your players can stumble across this settlement and these individuals that are perpetually frightened, you know, you can present them as meek and constantly afraid even of the party as they travel through and they're trying to trade wares and perhaps pick up information or some sort of clues or item or direction, let's say, if they're traveling from one place to another. And this is kind of a drop-off point or a stopping point. And you could have them discover what's going on in the town or in the settlement, either through happenstance or their own curiosity, or perhaps they've ridden in shortly after one of these kidnappings or abductions by the Nalfeshni has taken place. And so the people come together and beg the adventurers to figure out what's going on or to destroy and defeat the Nalfeshni so that it doesn't continue to swoop in and take these citizens that are never to be seen again once they're taken away. And I think with that, you can create a pretty interesting scenario where perhaps the Nalfeshni flies off into another isolated area with the captive. Perhaps the Nalfeshni resides somewhere in a cave or at the top of a mountain, perhaps within the volcano of the island. If you're using an isolated area like an island and, and ship traversal and the players can then go in and clear out or travel through the layer of the Nalfeshni. And you can present it in a way that is somewhat vivid for your players. You know, you can describe things like half-eaten corpses, rotting flesh, piled up skeletons. You could even use something like rodents or carrion eaters that have swarmed this area where all of these dead people have been left by the Nalfeshni once it's finished consuming them. And you could then populate the layer of the Nalfeshni with perhaps swarms of rats or carrion crawlers or anything like that. And as the players make their way through this dungeon or layer, you can have them take on the Nalfeshni finally, or maybe they 
get to the final chamber, which just so happens to be the kitchen, <laughs> if you would, of the Nalfeshni, and they catch it in the middle of preparing itself a tasty snack that it just picked up right before the adventurers arrived at that settlement. And I think in that way, you can use the Nalfeshni to a pretty decent effect where your players are not sure what they're taking on. You know, perhaps the residents of the town or of the settlement don't know what exactly it is that is consuming the humans. They just know that it's a monster that flies around and swoops down and picks up their people and takes them away, never to be seen again. And I think that with the imagery of the Nalfeshni in the way that the Nalfeshni looks, the party would be hard pressed to figure out exactly what it is that is accosting the people because it looks sort of like a boar, kind of like an ape with these strange feathered bird wings, kind of looks like it could be a mutated orc or troll even. And so you can have the townsfolk not really know what it is that is causing all of this panic and strife and suffering. They just know that it's been doing it for a long time and that they want it to stop. And so they beg the party to help them rid the settlement of this evil. And from there, you can even expand further. Now, you could ask yourself, okay, so why does the Nalfeshni do this? Is this just a comfortable place for it? It's discovered a spot where there are humanoids that are easy pickings for it, for it to feed off of and consume and kind of sate its hunger? Or is there a greater reason for this? And if you want to implement sort of a larger overarching reasoning behind it, there's a couple of ways you could go. I mean, really, there's many, many ways you could go, but there's a couple of ways that come to mind immediately for me when thinking of the reasoning behind the Nalfeshni being present and causing this sort of trauma and destruction to the humanoids, the people of that settlement, to the material plane. First and foremost is for the sake of chaos, is just for the sake of destruction, for the sake of capricious behavior and to cause strife on the material plane because that is the inherent nature of demons. So you could just have an opportunistic and ambitious demon trying to make itself more powerful and bring itself up in the ranks by causing as much chaos as possible on the material plane. Another way you could go about it though is that the Nafeshni is serving another individual in order to serve some form of purpose whilst simultaneously being able to sustain itself. And I think that that could be a really interesting way of going about it if you wanted to long tail this into a series of adventures or a leg of your campaign where perhaps the Nalfeshni is swooping down on these people and taking them away to consume them and has chosen this settlement because it is isolated, but also because it is the perfect spot to serve its master. And its master could be something to the effect of a necromancer or a lich who's trying to increase the size of their army, you know, of their legion of undead servants so that they can effectively take over the material plane or whatever region they're interested in or whatever part of the land that they want. And so what they've done is they have summoned a Nalfeshni or they've made a deal perhaps with a demon lord or with the Nalfeshni itself. And what they've done is they've told the Nalfeshni, listen, you need to eat humans or you like to eat humanoids. So what we're going to do is, is you're going to go to this place that's sort of offset off the beaten path. Nobody knows about it. It's a small little town and you're going to consume these people and take them away and pile them up, pile up their corpses, their skeletons in some sort of spot, some area for me so that once I come back, I can reanimate these individuals and they can serve me. And in turn, you get effectively unlimited sustenance for as long as you're willing to maintain loyalty to my cause, right? And so now you have a monstrous creature that is accosting this settlement or this town, what have you. You have a strange environment for your players at the table where everyone is sort of frightened and skittery and jumpy and meek. And they don't understand why, which should inspire them or trigger their curiosity, if you would, to figure out what's going on. And then you have a 
decent monster for them to take on, as well as an extension of the monster's presence and a reason for them being there that leads to a further down the road adventure or challenge or encounter that they may have to contend with. Another way that you could use an Alfeshni would be as sort of a pseudo deity for a cult or even some sort of primitive civilization where they believe that the Nalfeshni protects them or guards them and what they have to do in order to maintain protection by the Nalfeshni is provide it with humanoid sacrifices whenever the allotted time comes or dictated time by the demon, right? So imagine if you would a certain level of extortion perhaps, you know, could be something where there was an eclipse or a full moon or something like that. And the Nalfeshni decided to make the most of the opportunity. It presented itself and told the people of that land, oh, I will protect you and I will take care of you and I will ensure no one or nothing harms you. But in order to do that, I require a sacrifice once every however long. Insert your preferred amount of time here. And you have another instance where an Alfeshni has a reason to be present consistently in a certain spot and cause havoc there. And then you could create something that's a little challenging for your players where your players have to stop the Nalfeshni from committing these acts or allowing this to take place. But the individuals of the primitive civilization have no other choice in their minds. That's all they know. That's what they were told. Who will protect them if the Nalfeshni is gone or doesn't take care of them anymore because they stop giving it these sacrifices. And you could also have the Nalfeshni be present in that area because perhaps there's a portal or a tear to the abyss that the people didn't know about or they recently discovered. And just as a test, let's say they threw something into the portal or someone volunteered to enter the tear and see what was on the other side and what came out was a Nalfeshni. You could even use something to the effect of perhaps the sage or shaman of that village or of that settlement went into the tear and was consumed and killed by the Nalfeshni. And the Nalfeshni exited the tear onto the material plane and deceived the people saying that they were the sage and all of that, but traversing through these different planes and returning had left them warped and twisted, but it is in fact still them. And then you can have this sort of grand deception of the Nalfeshni who presents themselves as this wise sage-like individual who entered the portal and is taking advantage of the fact that the people believe it in order to perpetuate its goals and to continue to get a meal for itself on the material plane whilst also sowing despair. And you could introduce that to your players in such a way that they are curious to see what's going on. So let's say, for example, they find this place or they stumble across this place. They make their way to this area. And there's these people that have decided that they're no longer willing to sacrifice their own for the sake of the Nalfeshni's desires. Or it could be that there's just none left. The Nalfeshni has become so gluttonous and avaricious that they've consumed all of the humanoids that they're really able to give up without necessarily running their population into the ground or without having enough people there to defend the tribe if there are some sort of threats. And so they've elected to stop sacrificing people to the Nalfeshni because the Nalfeshni has stopped protecting them or perhaps the Nalfeshni made the promise to protect them in exchange for these sacrifices, but never did. And now they're sort of stuck just serving it and they don't want to be anymore. So they invoke the help of the party and ask them to stop the Nalfeshni or convince it to go away or convince it to no longer require them to sacrifice their own people in order to maintain protection, which they are not actually getting, right? And you can create some interesting instances, I think, with that, where especially if the Nalfeshni is using the, the deception of being the shaman or the, the sage, if you would, of the tribe, and 
there's this sort of conflict where the people don't necessarily want the Naufeshni to be killed. They just don't want it to require such a brutal exchange for its protection, especially when it's not effective in protecting them or has stopped protecting them and just shows up for the sacrifice. And then you could have your players discover the truth, realize that it is a grand deception, take on the Naufeshni and defeat it, and then they have to explain or interact and deal with these tribal people and sort of show them that the Naufeshni is not who they claim to be. And that could lead to the party having to traverse into the abyss, perhaps to find the body of the sage in order to bring back some form of evidence to show that the Naufeshni is not what it claims to be. The party could just take on the Naufeshni and destroy it, rid the tribe of its terror and havoc, and then have to perhaps run away from the tribe because now they're against them because they killed their only means of protection or their pseudo deity, as I mentioned at the beginning, something like that. And they have to either explain themselves or be arrested of sorts or run out of town, stuff like that, right? And I think that that could lead to a pretty interesting adventure that your players sort of have to balance and sort of tread lightly to figure out how they're going to approach this and complete this and overcome this challenge whilst maintaining a level of peace and civility amongst these individuals who are effectively in this perpetual fearful worship of this monster that they see as a deity because it was the sage of their tribe transformed due to exposure to different dimensions to different planes. All in all, though, I do think the Nalfeshni is an interesting monster. It certainly looks different, which I like. It's unique. And I think that there are a number of ways that you can utilize it for your adventures or for your campaign. But I feel that the act of consuming humanoids that it has can be a great place to start in terms of inspiration for an adventure involving a Nalfeshni and why it's wherever it is, and why it's doing what it's doing, and how it's managing to be successful in completing the task that it seeks out to complete. It's also a pretty tough monster at a CR of 13, and it has a decent number of actions, as well as its ability to teleport and be resistant to magic. It's got pretty solid stats. It can fly, so it can cause some trouble for your players. It can certainly make for a good challenge and a good battle for your players to contend with alongside its nature of consuming of humanoids and its desire to consume humanoid flesh above all other things. I think that that makes for a pretty good starting point for utilizing the Nalfeshni and implementing them in your campaign and provides your players with an adventure that may be a little different from what they're already used to. But that's all I got for you fine folks today when it comes to the Nalfeshni and how we can utilize it in some adventures for our table. On the next episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be covering the Quasit, which should be fun to do. It's a lower CR monster as well as a smaller monster in size. And I think that we'll be able to come up with some interesting stuff implementing the Quasit. But until then, thank you all very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it. I'd kindly ask that you leave a rating or a review wherever you can, wherever is possible. I'd highly appreciate it to help the podcast out, help me out. If you're listening to this episode of Monsters Manifested on YouTube, I'd kindly ask that you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff, as it would help me out, it would help the channel out, help the podcast out, help it grow, and potentially get to the ears of more DMs and GMs that are trying to come up with ways of implementing certain creatures for their next adventure for the players at their table or perhaps for new dms who would like to start running a game but are not quite sure where to start but either way thank you all very much once again and i'll see you on the next one have a good day everyone